he wore a wig. My dad. It was the 1970s. A lot of men did. Even his big hero, Frank Sinatra, had one. Bobby Charlton never, though, but he probably should have. My dad was a concreter in the shipyard and dead proud of it. He used to mix sand, cement and water all day and then spread it out on the floor until he could play a bloody snooker on it. It was strong as hell. It'd almost break your fingers if he you shook your hand. There's a picture of Dad, my older brother John, Sister Shirley and me when we were kids in our backyard one summer afternoon. I was about five and we've all got our tops off and we're flexing our muscles like bodybuilders. Dad must have been in his mid-thirties and he looks great, like a fight-hungry boxer. Well, his body does. His hair looks like it was badly stuck on with glue, which it was. Ah, <laughs> oh, it was really sensitive about his wig. Mam drilled it into his kids that we weren't to laugh or make fun of it. We weren't even allowed to mention it. When his hair grew too long at the back and sides, our mam used to cut it and then dye the bits you could see to try and match the wig. It never worked. You could see from miles away where the wig ended and my dad began. First time I was embarrassed about it, and him, was when I was 11. Mum had left my dad by this point and taken John, Shirley and me with her. I was going on a school trip to Wembley to watch England schoolboys and uh, it's what people these days would call a lads and dads day out. All the other kids were already on the bus with their fathers ready to go but there was no sign of mine. I was sitting near the back and, and everyone was waiting for him. Finally he came running up to the bus, got on and started a slow walk down the aisle to me. Everyone was staring at him and I could see the other kids covering their mouths trying not to laugh. Then, just before he sat down, Kevin Gallagher on the back seat shouted at the top of his voice, WIG! That was it then. The old bus erupted. I still can't remember now what his reaction was, but not long after that, he stopped wearing it. It's always troubled me that I never stood up for him and that I was embarrassed about him on that school trip. But I was too young, I guess. I was thinking about that this morning. I was in the co-op cafe, the one I used to go to with my dad when he had his kids on Saturday mornings. I still go in at weekends to do my horses and have a brew. Anyway, they had the radio playing and uh, Sinatra came on. God, my dad loved him. He was obsessed even. He got such joy out of his music, it sent him someplace else. It's funny how music can stir so many memories and emotions. Well, it got me thinking about my dad wearing a wig like old Blue Eyes this morning. And also about the last day I saw him. It was in the hospital. His 30 odd years of breathing in cement powder, asbestos and God knows what else had left him with mesothelioma. He was only 72. But for those five or so years before he died, his breathing had steadily got worse and worse until it stopped. When I saw him on that last day, he he couldn't speak anymore and he was on a ventilator. It was when iPods had just come out and, and I bought one and I stuck his favourite song on it, Summer Wind by Sinatra. I stretched over him and tried not to dislodge the wires and tubes and put the buds in his ears. As soon as I hit play it was Miraculous. His eyes opened wide and he half smiled and his head sank back in the pillar. Then, slowly at first, he, he raised both his hands up in the air and stuck out his right and left index finger and gently conducted the orchestra, moving his fingers from side to side mid-air. 
I don't know who or where or what he was thinking about, but for those three blissful minutes, he, he was transported to a different, better world. <clears throat> when it ended, he uh, <clears throat> closed his eyes. That's the last I saw him. <clears throat> 